Okay, so this course is called Differential Calculus, and the key word here is differential, the derivative. So what's the derivative of a function? Well, let's draw the following picture. Consider that you have a function in the xy plane. Imagine the function may look something like this. So the equation of the line, not the line but the curve, sorry, is given by y equals fx. So y is equal to f of x, where f is some function of x. We know how to define the slope of a straight line, right? It's the change in y over the change in x. The question is, can we define the slope of a function, of a curve, that is not a line? Well, let's see if we can do it. Take a given value of x. Find the corresponding point on the curve. So at x, y will be simply f of x. So we have the corresponding y value, and that is f of x. So think of it, if the curve is smooth enough, there is a very special line passing through this point, and that touches the curve only at that point. And that is, as you may know, the so-called tangent line. The tangent line at a point to a curve is the unique line that touches the curve only at that point. And this line is called, as we've just said, the tangent line. Okay, so now what we have is an association. To every point on the curve, if the curve is smooth enough, we can draw its tangent line. And naturally, the tangent line has a slope. And the slope of that line is what we call the derivative of the function. This is the derivative. Okay, so how do we denote this quantity? Well, there's two ways to write or denote the derivative. The first one is dy over dx. And we can also denote the derivative, the slope, of the tangent line to the function at a given value of x by also f prime of x. And now if you look at this, it looks like the derivative is a function of x, right? dy over dx, f prime of x. Let's see why the derivative is actually a function of x. Take another value of x along the x-axis and take its corresponding point on the curve. Now draw the tangent line to the curve at this point. It will look something like this. And you can clearly see that this tangent line and this one are different and that they have different slopes. So as x changes, given a curve that is not a straight line, at different points you will get different tangent lines, therefore different slopes. So the derivative of a function being the slope of the tangent line at the point of interest, is a function of x. And this is the heart of differential calculus. Of course, now we have to find the derivative geometrically. How do we compute it? If you look at this picture, there is a bit of a problem. Because to find the slope of a line, we need two points. And if you look at the tangent line, we only have one point on it. So we cannot find the slope of the tangent line directly. So the question is, well, how do we do it? And the answer is using limits. So consider now, we will reproduce the picture, but we'll take a additional line. So consider reproducing our picture, the x and the y axes. And our function looks something like this, right? and we were interested in the derivative of the function at that point, and the derivative again is simply the slope of the tangent line at that point. The idea is let's take a line 
that's very close to the tangent line, but not exactly. So let's take a second point on the x-axis. Let's take this point. So we'll add to x a small amount. Suppose it's h. So we say x plus h. So h is a small quantity. Then take the point on the curve that corresponds to this x value. And now, well, what is the corresponding y value? We have the point x plus h, so the y value is the function at that point, so the y value here is f of x plus h. So if we connect these two points, we have now a line cutting through the curve. And this line is called the secant line. Secant because the line, as you can see, cuts through the function at two different points. So you can see that the secant line is clearly not the tangent line. But let's find the slope of the secant line because now we have two points on it, so we can find its slope. As before, the slope of a line is the change in y over the change in x. So here's the change in y. It is the greater y value, f of x plus h, minus a smaller y value, which is here, f of x. So we now have the change in y. Well, what about the change in x? Well, the change in x will be the greater x value, x plus h, minus the smaller x value, x. But x plus h minus x leaves us with h. So we have the change in y over the change in x. So we have now the slope of the secant line. is equal to delta y over delta x. And delta y is f of x plus h minus f of x. Over the change in x, delta x, which is simply equal to h. So let's see where we're at now. Our goal, if you remember, is finding the derivative at the point x, and the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Well, what have we done? Well, we said the slope of a tangent line is hard to find directly because we only have one point on the tangent line. So we found, using a second point on the curve, a secant line, and this is the equation of the slope of this line. So the question is now, how do we go from knowing the slope of the secant line to figuring out the slope of the tangent line? Because that is what we're interested in. Well, let's look at a second picture, or actually a third picture, and figure out if we can find a way to obtain the slope of the tangent line from the slope of the secant line. So let's reproduce the same picture, but now we'll take away a lot of the pieces and rem remove well, everything except what's necessary to figure out how we can arrive from the slope of the secant line to the slope of the tangent line. So we were interested in, at the point x, figuring out, given the equation y equals f of x, figuring out the slope of the tangent line. What we had now was a second line, which we call the secant line. 
So this is our tangent line. The point here was the point x plus a small amount h. And that is our secant line. And remember what we had. What we wanted was the slope of the tangent line, dy over dx. Or if you prefer, f prime of x, same thing. Now we know, if you remember, the slope of the secant line, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So we have f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So let's see. We really want the slope of the tangent line, the slope of this line, dy over dx, f prime of x, the derivative. We know the slope of this line. It's just f of x plus h minus f of x over h. The question is, what can we do to the secant line to make it closer and closer to the tangent line? Well, look at h here, right? x is a fixed value. Whatever value you want, that's x. And now what if we take a smaller value of x? Suppose we take a smaller value of h, sorry. So if we add to x a smaller amount, suppose we get this point. Then we have the corresponding point on the curve. And you see at this point, corresponding to x plus h, will now become this point. So you'll have another secant line. Oops, it's rather a bad picture, but suppose that this is the point of interest. So it would be with this x value. Well, what do you notice? As we have taken a smaller h value, the secant line got a little closer to the tangent line. What if we take an even smaller value of h? So then we add to x an even smaller amount, say up to here. Then the point on the curve is this one. Connect the two points. And what do you notice? The secant line is a little closer to the tangent line. So as we are moving this point closer and closer to x, the point of the secant line here moves closer and closer to the point of interest, the point of tangency, and so the secant line becomes closer and closer to the tangent line. So the slope of the secant line will get closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. But how do we make this point approach this one? We have to let h approach 0. If you let h shrink to 0, this point will approach x. And so this point will approach this point, and as we can see, the secant line will approach the tangent line. So the slope of the secant line will approach the slope of the tangent line. And that is the heart of differential calculus. So there you have it. If you want the slope of the tangent line at any given value of x, given the function, take the slope of the secant line and let h approach 0.